so what is going on everybody my name is Mail, and welcome to your fifth i think responsive web design tutorial in which what we are gonna do is uh, move down and see some real content right so so far we have been just aligning some images and text and a header and all that stuff well that's important as well but majorly you would want to make your content responsive and uh, this site is sort of not the site you would always get because uh, um, this is sort of a landing page or something <laughs> actually it's my site only but uh, anyhow when you will be doing things when you'll be making sites responsive they would usually be in a blog post blog sort of layout or maybe completely different because every site um you know is sort of different unless it's using a common framework like wordpress or even wordpress is templates has templates and all that stuff so you know it really depends i'm just trying to give a general idea to you guys how you can actually you know implement these strategies and uh, go ahead on any website right it's not specific to any sort of layout so that's why i've chosen such a weird sort of layout so um yeah right now you can see that it looks still i hit 1130 and things start to mess up real close as we get to 960 and again you can see this looks awfully bad awfully bad yes awfully bad um so let's just do something about it yeah okay so what we can do what we can do let's just think now since i i am using this uh, nice little text shower text highlighter rather we should say as a plugin so i do not think i have a lot of control because there are a lot of things going on here right and it's not even um pure html it's generated by javascript i have not written all that stuff right so as of now i can see two options either we can decrease its width decrease the font size and make it a little bit smaller or we can make use of css transform to shrink it down shrink everything down or we can move this to a complete new line right so i think we should re reject the new line one because that will kind of create a lot of height for a single language and that wouldn't look very nice and we can actually completely get rid of this for the mobile devices but i guess we have barely even hit tablets right now so let's just not get rid of that this soon so what i'm gonna do is let's just see we have this language and we have this number so if i do dip dot language g u a g -E, make sure to spell that right yep and then the pre is inside it so what we can do is we can say transform transform scale um, 0 0.5 um, no that breaks things 0 0.89 or 8 maybe so it makes it small but uh, i mess up with these two guys right here which are the shadow effects probably and these are this is because this is because these are before and after stuff so if i do transform on these guys as well 0 0.9 do we have and obviously we can just put it here 0 0.8 it was but it's a little bit out of alignment 
so instead of fixing all that stuff because there's a lot of absolute stuff going on here let's just get rid of the shadow part completely and uh, keep it to where we are uh, 1080 I guess 1080 looks good we can say that and we can say I have no idea why I wrote styles like that. Um, display none. Right? Okay. So, goodbye shadows. So, now we have this code. And again, we sh I think I should just decrease a little bit of padding here. So instead of making it to 70, let's just bring it down to maybe 10 so that we can breathe a little. Yeah, and if I scale it down again, I think we are good. Yep. We can just bring down its size as well a little bit if you want. Um, this is again around 4 EMs. So let me just, or rather REMs, so 4 REMs, there we go, and uh, I can get a similar behavior at 1080 as well, so I guess making it to 3.5 would do the work. And finally, if we take a look, okay, so it looks like... This is not going anywhere, so let's just see what happened. Okay, so our styles are overridden. I have no idea. Oh, okay, it's loading from a different file, prism.css, so that's why maybe there's a sort of glitching in the order. So we just need to give it a little bit of precedence. Um, let's just say this is dev, dev and we should be good to go all right so now if we scale it down i think um we didn't change the font size yeah we did so let's just make these buttons a little bit smaller as well so we can say them as a padding um, four pixel eight pixel or let's just rather leave them alone maybe yeah let's just keep the padding same right so this layout looks pretty good for now around 880 and 890 right so let's just see things start breaking up at uh, or maybe even this is good the buttons on two lines is not a problem yeah so let's just break everything at 720 so at 720 what we are gonna do is get rid of this guy right here so i'm gonna say div dot language pre display none that's it bye bye and uh, here we are and uh, if it's not there then what is there well our content is there right and what the hell do i have here uh what do we have in here content margin right zero that's it something like that and we are good to go again and where the heck are we okay so it looks like there's some sort of problem here as well 
so this is language learn CSS and why the heck is it pushed so bad oh I guess we'll again get some sort of precedence issue here right so I'm just gonna say or would we if I make it to margin zero uh, margin zero let's just see if we get any reload we probably did where is it content yeah it's not probably following that okay so could we get it to make it to div because I kind of avoid making use of uh, uh, important keyword as long as we can just avoid it because it kind of creates a fuzz we can just manually overwrite this by that okay looks cool and uh, simple as well so yeah looks great so if I scale it down now I guess we do not need to do anything much beyond this point I think it's out of alignment a little bit yeah the containers the font size is too big I guess so let's just drop it to um, what do we have in here diff content h2 to um, 3 rems font size size 3 rems and we'll be good to go shrink it down and that's pretty much what I am targeting for now right it's again a little bit out of control so we can just make it to two rims and we'll be good to go right so that is how pretty much you create a very very or actually turn a very very boring website into a responsive website and in the next tutorial i'll be showing you or rather in, not in the next one maybe in the next to next one because in the next tutorial we'll be fixing a little bit of glitches finally on this website and finally we'll be seeing how to make this thing live so that it works on mobile devices as well because right now if you go and see it on a mobile it would look pretty much the same way as it looks like on the desktop because we are missing a very important key element here which i'm going to tell you in the next or probably in the next to next video so that is all for this one and if you liked it then don't forget to subscribe and thank you for watching i'll see you then in the next one